Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today we have an episode of Commander's Two Cents. On episodes like these, I give you my own personal take on topics about the format in general and current news. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Also, make sure you check out the Porcine Stand, our limited edition playmat on Kickstarter that's only available for the 30-day campaign. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. In the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. So on a previous episode I tackled the best alternative win cards in Commander. Today's episode is going to be similar but a bit different because today we're going to be tackling the best alternative loss cards in Commander. Some cards can win you the game outright but others can make one player or more lose. Like that previous episode I'm going to separate these cards into categories as well as I can. So let's start things off with our first category, Come and Knock on Our Door. And the card in this category is going to be Door to Nothingness. It's an artifact that costs 5 and it comes into play tapped. By paying white white, blue blue, black black, red red, green green and tapping it, you can sacrifice it to make target player lose the game. So there is a heavy investment in this card and you can't activate it right away. Essentially it costs you a total of 15 mana over 2 turns to use. But it is a very simple and straightforward way to take out one opponent. Once you have it untapped and have the mana for it though, it's something that you can hold over everyone's head. If they're going to try to do anything that displeases you, you can just take them out. Also, it doesn't exile when you sacrifice it, so it can be recurred. So this can take out multiple opponents, but it's going to take some time and resources to do so. But in Commander, getting the amount of mana that you need to activate this isn't going to be that tough. Keep in mind that this card can only be used in a 5 color deck. There are some fantastic decks out there though that can really work with a card like this. Ramos Dragon Engine seems like a perfect fit for this card. It has, whenever you cast a spell, put a plus plus one counter on Ramos Dragon Engine for each of that spell's colors. And then by removing five of those plus plus one counters, you add white, white, blue, blue, black, black, red, red, green, green to your mana pool, and you can only activate this ability once each turn. So basically, Ramos can give you the exact mana that you need to activate the door. Another deck this can work well in, though, is Jota Archmage Eternal. Now, Jota can help you cheat on spells and ramp you at an incredible rate. He can't give you a discount on the door or its activation, but he can help you get there with the ramp. And finally, even a deck like Progenitus is a good place for it as well. Progenitus has the exact same mana cost as the door's activation, so you're going to be having to ramp to get to there anyways. Again, Door to Nothingness is a very simple and straightforward card when it comes to being an alternative lost card. There are going to be other ones that have more conditions than just being able to cast and activate them. So let's move on to our next category, To Be or Not To Be Sieged. And the alternative lost card in this category is Mirrored and Besieged. It's an enchantment for a 2 and a blue, and it says as it enters the battlefield, you choose Mirren or Phyrexian. If you chose Mirren, whenever you cast an artifact spell, you create a 1 1 colorless mirror artifact creature token. And if you chose Phyrexian at the beginning of your end step, you draw a card, then discard a card. Then, if there are 15 or more artifact cards in your graveyard, target opponent loses the game. So, this is a very flexible alternative loss card. Depending on the situation that you're in, one of its two modes can be more beneficial to you. If you need to establish a board, Mirren's a good choice. If you need to loot or already have a full graveyard, go ahead and choose Phyrexian. Because of the topic of this episode though, let's focus on that Phyrexian half. So this alternative loss card is conditional. It happens at your end step and you first draw a card, then you discard a card, and if you have 15 or more artifacts in your graveyard, you make one target opponent lose the game. So if you've got artifacts that are being sacrificed or destroyed, you can fill your graveyard up that way. Or you can also discard them or even mill too. 15 is a decent amount of artifacts, but for the right deck, this can be pretty easy to hit. And once you do hit that, each turn essentially you get to make one player lose. So this can be a very effective way of taking out all of your opponents over multiple turns. Some commanders that might be able to use this are Emery, Urza, and Alayla. With an Emery deck that's focused on milling, you can easily get that 15 artifacts pretty quickly. And then an Urza deck is going to be running a ton of artifacts already, so it benefits from both halves. And similarly, Alayla can also benefit from both halves as well. Overall, Mirrored and Besiege is a very flexible card. Either half can be effective in the right situation. So it's not a wasted card if that alternative loss condition can't be met. Next up, we've got another card that can be effective in multiple ways. So now let's move on to our next category with a very, very, very long word. And that card in that word is Triskai Decophobia. Essentially it means extreme superstition regarding the number 13. As a side note for this card, go ahead and try to find all the things that there are 13 of. The artist did a fantastic job at including 13s throughout the art. Regardless, let's get into the card itself. It's an enchantment for three and a black, and it says at the beginning of your upkeep, choose one. Each player with exactly 13 life loses the game, then each player gains one life. Or each player with exactly 13 life loses the game, then each player loses one life. So basically, if someone's at 13 on your upkeep, they're going to lose. And then each player will either be gaining one life or losing one life, depending on what you want. Keep in mind that this affects you as well. If on your upkeep, you've got exactly 13 life when this goes off, you're going to lose. But this can be a very effective card in the right deck. 
The kind of decks that want this effect though can be very specific. The first is going to be Selenia Dark Angel. Selenia can essentially drop your life total by any even numbered amount. This kind of deck is going to look to play with its life total and with opponents too. So if you can set everyone's life total down to 13 and then change your own, you can make everyone else lose while you stay alive. A grip slug deck like Mogus God of Slaughter can be a good place for it as well. These kinds of decks are just going to run a ton of effects that drop everyone's life totals. It's going to try to make it so that everyone else's life total drops though faster than its own. So Triskaidectophobia can not only help drop life totals, but it can also help make kills easier. Getting someone to 13 can be easier than getting someone to 0. Again, Triskaidectophobia is a good card for the right deck, but there are even some alternative loss cards that can actually be used as commanders. Let's go over one now in our next category, Can You See The Difference? With this category, we're going to go over Tempsis All Seeing. Tempsis is a 4-5 Sphinx with Flying that costs 3 blue blue blue. By paying 2 in a blue and tapping it, you can draw 2 cards, then discard a card. And then whenever it deals damage to an opponent, you may reveal your hand. If cards with at least 6 different converted mana costs are revealed this way, that player loses the game. So this is a very specific loss condition. First, Attempsis has to deal damage to an opponent. Most of the time this is going to be combat damage, but there are some other ways that you can allow Attempsis to deal damage out of combat. Regardless, once that damage is dealt, you can reveal 6 different cards in your hand with a different converted mana cost. This is not an impossible requirement to meet, but it's not that easy. If you want this to consistently occur, you're probably going to have to build your deck around this concept. You're going to want to have a wide variety of cards that have a very different converted mana cost. There are some things that can help with this though. Delve cards generally have a very high converted mana cost and can be cast for cheaper. And then split cards can also help as well since their mana cost is the total of both halves. So it is a condition that can be met, but it's not the easiest to do. And again, with this, you are taking out one opponent at a time. It can be effective with the right build, but again, in my opinion, you're going to have to build the entire deck around it. Again, Attempsis is legendary, so it can be your commander, and you can dedicate your entire resources to this. But you can still pull off this alternative loss condition too, but with less consistency in other decks. Attempsis is a Sphinx, so it can fit right into a Sphinx tribal deck like Kunesh. And then Asperia is another Sphinx tribal commander that you can consider. Outside of Sphinx, Kami the Crescent Moon can be a good choice as well. Generally, it's a group hug deck that's looking to draw a ton of cards. So just by drawing an incredible amount of cards, you should be able to meet that condition as well. Again, Attempsis can have a difficult alternative loss condition to meet, but it can be a very rewarding one as well. Another especially rewarding one comes in our next category. And that category is... Can't touch this. And the card in this category is another legendary creature with Phage the Untouchable. Phage is a 4-4 Avatar minion that costs 3 black 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 black. She has, when she enters the battlefield, if you didn't cast it from your hand, you lose the game. Whenever Phage deals combat damage to a creature, destroy that creature, it can't be regenerated. And then whenever Phage deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. So because of that first line, Phage is really hard to use as your commander. Because when she's your commander, you're casting her from your command zone and not from your hand. Now there are ways to get around this. If you've got Command Beacon, you can put her into your hand from the command zone. Or if you've got a way to stop her into the battlefield trigger like Torpor Orb, you can get around that as well. And of course, another way is just to use her in the 99 instead of in the command zone. Regardless, once you get her out, her effect can be very powerful. She only has to hit a player once for them to lose. If you got ways to protect her and to get her through, this can be very deadly. It doesn't matter how much life a player has, one touch from Phage and they're dead. While having her in the command zone can be a fun challenge, it's probably easier to use her in a different deck. A deck like the Zov the Multifarious can be a fantastic place for her. Lazov can change into multiple creatures so he can use one to get through and then he can turn into Phage to be a one-hit kill. Other decks like Gorm and Vitrus or Sisters of Stone Death can help Phage get through. Again, Phage is a very powerful turn of loss card and can be extremely deadly in the right deck. Just one touch from Phage, and they're dead. Some somewhat similar loss cards come in our next category. And that category is called Gaze of the Gorgon. In this category, we've got three cards, but they're all Vraska. Vraska Golgari Queen, Vraska the Unseen, and Vraska Scheming Gorgon all have very similar ultimates. Similar to Phage, they allow creatures to kill with just one hit. Rasko Golgari Queen's ultimate says you get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. Vraska the Unseen is going to create 3 1 1 Black Assassin creature tokens with whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. And Vraska Scheming Gorgon's ultimate says until end of turn, creatures you control gain death touch, and whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, that player loses the game. Each of these go about it in different ways, but essentially it's the same concept. One hit kills from any creature can be very deadly, especially if you've got ways to get those creatures through. Now, each of these alternative loss conditions have to be built up to get to them. Ultimating a Planeswalker isn't the easiest thing, especially in Commander since everyone can attack them. Regardless, once you do ultimate, you can take players out quickly. Some decks that might be able to use these are Savra, Izoni, and Sorov. Savra can force opponents to sacrifice creatures, which can allow your creatures to get through. Izoni can create a ton of insects, so one is bound to get through. And then Sorov can get your Planeswalker back if it's taken out. These alternative loss conditions might not be the most dependable because, again, you do have to work to get to them. But outside of those alternative loss conditions, their other abilities can provide you value. So in the right deck, they can be pretty effective. Another effective Planeswalker comes with our next category. 
and that one's called Godlike Potential. This category features Nicol Bolas Dragon God. This Planeswalker has 4 loyalty and costs blue, black, 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 red. It has all loyalty abilities of all other Planeswalkers on the battlefield. Its plus 1 is you draw a card, each opponent exiles a card from their hand or permanent they control. Its minus 3 is to destroy target creature or Planeswalker. Its minus 8 ultimate says each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or Planeswalker loses the game. So essentially if you can control your opponent's boards and make sure they don't have a legendary creature or Planeswalker, you can make everyone else lose the game by ultimating this. You can also get its loyalty up quicker by using other Planeswalkers Planeswalker's abilities that are more than plus one. Unlike many of the alternative loss conditions that we've gone through so far, this can finish off all opponents at once. There is a condition to be met, but it's not that hard of a condition to meet. Grixis has plenty of ways at dealing with Planeswalkers and creatures. One deck that can use this is Sisse Weatherlight Captain. Sisse can essentially tutor for legendary permanents and put them right onto the battlefield. So you can tutor out this card as well as another Planeswalker that can help this one out. Or if you're a big Bolas fan, you can also just put in a Nicol Bolas the Ravager deck or just the Nicol Bolas deck. Again, it can be a very powerful card in the right situation and can take all of your opponents out at once. But now let's move on to our final category, which is a bit of a different one. In that category, I'm going to call I Got This For You. This category is going to feature both Demonic Pact and Transcendence. Both of these cards are going to be different than the others because they actually make you lose the game. Now, usually that's not the goal, but we've got other ways to make them work for us. But stay with me as I get through these two cards. I'll get to the point. Demonic Pact is an enchantment that costs two black black. It has at the beginning of your upkeep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. Demonic Pact deals four damage to target creature or player and you gain four life. Target opponent discards two cards draw two cards, or you lose the game. And then Transcendence is an enchantment that costs three white, white, white. It says you don't lose the game for having zero or less life. When you have 20 or more life, you lose the game. And whenever you lose life, you gain two life for each one life lost. So both of these cards can make you lose, but you can use them to your advantage. Because if you can give them to someone else, you can make them lose instead. There aren't a ton of decks that can do this, but there are some. One is going to be Imanatu the Fate Shifter, which can use both. Essentially, her ultimate is a way to mass donate things. It says, choose left or right. Each player gains control of all non-land permanents other than Amanatu the Fate Shifter, controlled by the next player in the chosen direction. In the right situation, if you donate one of those enchantments, you can make that player lose the game. And then Zedra can work with Transcendence since you can pay red, white, blue to donate something. Keep in mind that you do have to be careful with these cards, especially Transcendence. But with the right deck and the right plan, both of these can be effective alternative lost cards. But now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your favorite alternative lost card is. Also, make sure you check out the Porcian Stand, our limited edition playmat that's only available for the 30-day Kickstarter campaign. Once that campaign ends, it will no longer be available for purchase, so make sure you're backing the campaign before it's too late. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tax. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.